Welcome to Forensic Science Sunday. Because I can't get my ish together, the post on Friday. Where I tell you one true crime case that was solved using forensic science all while doing, uh, that's right, my makeup. Today's video will be featuring the Party in Puerto Rico palette from BH Cosmetics as well as the Tanned in Tullum Highlight and Bronzer palette. I'm so excited! All the other items I'm using in this video will be linked in the description below. Please read the disclaimer, I am not a professional makeup artist, I am not a beauty guru, I am not a professional forensic pathologist, I don't do anything in criminal law, I am just the average girl at home like you, planning my makeup and talking about true crime. So if you love true crime makeup, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I know some of you have been here multiple times and just for whatever reason have not hit that subscribe button. Hit it, please. Thank you. The rings will be linked in the description below per usual. And let's get into today's case. I don't know what that was. Okay, we're gonna stop. Lucy is on the floor rolling around. What you doing? This all takes place in Watervale, Lake Michigan in 2003, where the Unger family spent their vacation every year. It was a nice, quiet getaway spot for the family, so they loved going up there every single year. Florence, the mother, worked as a bank loan officer while her husband, Mark, was a mortgage broker. He was also a well-known radio personality. He hosted this really popular sports radio show. Now, their vacation in 2003 was like many others. They had checked into their cabin, they ate dinner, and Mark spent time with their two sons. Now, somewhere during the evening, Florence decided to take a step outside because she needed to get some fresh air. Mark put their two sons to bed and then he went back outside to join Florence. But when he went back outside, Florence wasn't there. In fact, she was nowhere to be found. Now, Mark saw that the lights at their next door neighbor's cabin was still on, so he figured Perhaps Florence went over there to talk with them or to hang out and you, he didn't he, according to him He didn't want to leave the children alone in the cabin. So he decided to just go to bed He says he woke up the next day just after dawn and Florence still was not back he started to panic and called the resort owners around 7.30 a.m. that morning, wondering if they had seen or heard from Florence at all, but they said they hadn't seen her. And at this point, they became uh, increasingly alarmed and decided to search the entire resort looking for Florence. This is when they made the gruesome discovery. They found Florence's body floating in the lake and called the police. When police arrived to the scene, they found Florence's body laying in the lake next to a boat launch. They noticed that 12 inches above the launch was the Unger's deck outside of their cabin. And one of the officers noticed that part of the deck railing was broken out. Now they speculated that Florence was either sitting or leaning against the deck railing and it gave out and that is probably how she fell down to the boat launch to her death. It made sense that she would fall down to the boat launch, but they couldn't figure out how her body ended up in the water. So the investigators measured the height of the railing and they found out that it was actually 10 inches below the state regulation code. It would have been very easy for someone to lose their balance and fall off. Especially if you take into consideration the broken railing, police described it as a death trap. Florence's body was taken to the medical examiner's office for an autopsy report and for substance testing, and they found no drugs or alcohol in her system at all. 
but what they did find was evidence of severe head trauma. Although there was evidence of head trauma, the cause of death was drowning. There was evidence of water inhalation. Coworkers, family members, and friends were shocked by the news of Florence's death and they were absolutely devastated. Police began to go over all the possible scenarios as to how Florence had fallen to her death. They wanted to know how she ended up in the lake was it an accident, suicide, or something more sinister? Her family told police that there was no way she was suicidal. She would never leave her children motherless. And investigators didn't find any other evidence that would point to her committing suicide. Accidents seem like the most probable cause because the railing on the deck was broken, it was very weak. Investigators theorized that the deck gave way and she fell to the boat launch below. But then how did her body get into the water? Mark Unger hired a private investigator and an independent forensic firm to find out why. Now Mark's private investigator and forensic scientist concluded that it was an accident. Florence fell from the deck and the momentum from the fall rolled her over the boat launch and into the water. They actually came up with five different scenarios as to how Florence had fallen to her death. They presented computer generated examples which concluded, like I said, that it was all an accident. However, the original medical examiner completely disagreed with these findings. The medical examiner found that the blood stain on the boat launch was almost a foot in diameter, meaning that the body had been there for some period of time. The medical examiner examined slides of her brain tissue to find out how long she had been lying on the boat launch bleeding. Its main focus was on the neuron, the cellular communication system. This controls movement, memory, and emotion. He found repair proteins in Florence's brain that was released after her head injury. The neurons were suffering from lack of oxygen. Most of them were damaged and some of them already dead, but some of them were still trying to repair. This told them that she was still alive, unconscious, but most likely still alive. Medical examiners estimated she had been laying unconscious on the cement for at least 90 minutes and as long as two hours before she had been in the water. They found some other inconsistencies. The part of the railing that was broken out was not lining up with where the blood stain is, like where she fell from. So it appeared that she hadn't actually fallen from that spot if you looked at the evidence. According to forensic scientists, the trajectory at where she wound up did not line up with where the railing had been broken out. Analysts checked the unbroken section of the deck using something called a load cell. Load cell, as one of the detectives would describe it, is pretty much a scale. It's a series of springs and sensors and measures compression and tension. Florence weighed 110 pounds and they wanted to simulate her sitting on the railing. So they attached a bicycle seat to one end of the load cell. On the other end, they attached a T-bar which weighed 200 pounds. However, the railing didn't budge. They realized then that any idea that the railing was rotting or depleting wasn't going to work. Police thought that the scene looked staged to look like an accident. At this point, Mark Unger became investigators' prime suspect. But when they questioned everyone who knew Mark, they all said that Mark was not the killer. They were pretty adamant that Mark was not capable of committing this crime. They said that he loved Florence and his children and he would never do something like this. That's what they all say. Famous last words. That's when investigators took a look into Mark's past, they found that he had no criminal history. So investigators decided to question his two sons and they said that they did not hear anything that night. They didn't hear any fighting, yelling, screaming, anything like that. At this point, Mark was running with the theory that his wife's death was an accident, that she had in fact fallen off of that railing that was broken. Now initially he told police that his wife was depressed, but then he changed his story and told them that his wife would never commit suicide. I think that's gonna be his downfall.
But her family was convinced that this was murder and Mark was the killer. He was the last person to see her alive, so he had opportunity and he had no alibi for that night. I'll keep pointing at y'all, I don't know why. I am not trying to stab you. But if he was the killer, what was his motive? Investigators took a closer look into the couple's relationship. To the outside, the Unger's marriage appeared perfect, but we all know that's not true. After talking to the couple's inner circle of friends, police found out that the Ungers had many problems. Mark was an alcoholic. He also had drug problems as well as a gambling addiction. Dude, I mean, some people just have an addictive personality, I guess, and they just get addicted to everything. His addictions were so bad that it cost him his job. He was in and out of rehab at six months at a time. So, I mean, how could you keep a job when you're in and out like that. I mean, it was so bad that Florence began to call rehab his full-time job, which is like, that's not funny. She had a sense of humor, at least, right? Further look into their relationship, investigators found that Florence had filed for divorce and she had started seeing a new man. And this all happened just two months before her death. And get this, you guys, the new guy, he was a close friend of Mark's as well. Girl, no, what is you doing? Florence. I'm in no way validating anything that had happened to her, but like, no, girl, that's, that's, no. That's the last place I would be looking. I'd be staying away, all the way away from his ass. I wouldn't be trying to come anywhere near his friends. Now it's time to go into the palette, but anyway, back to the story. <laughs> well, that took forever. Let's try it again. Unfortunately today, guys, I'm feeling like doing something a little bit more toned down, a little more neutral. I know it's not my normal thing, so I wanted to switch it up a bit. Even though these are beautiful shades, don't worry. I will definitely use this palette again in the future to create another look, and it'll probably be super bright because I am absolutely in love with this hot pink color as well as this, um, what is that, like an olive color there? But I'm just not skilled enough, I feel to know how to mix that correctly. So yeah, I never wear bronzer. I can try it, but then I'm like, mm, nah, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. I don't know what I'm doing with that, I'm not even gonna lie. Investigators found that Florence went to go see this man just a couple of days before her death and that Mark may have known about it. Then another motive emerged. Florence had two life insurance policies. Damn girl, two. The life insurance policy totaled over three quarters of a million dollars. And of course, Mark was the sole beneficiary. Sorry if you have to hear my neighbor blowing her nose. It's so loud, I always hear it in like the other room. And I'm just like, girl, damn, what you got in there, a trumpet? There's so many sounds coming from that bathroom, I swear she'd be having band practice in there. Seriously. Just so happened that five days after his wife's death, Mark lost $7,000 in a local casino. Boo. What were you doing in that casino? And after talking to friends, police found out that Florence actually didn't want to go on the trip. She was telling family members and friends that she was afraid to go on this trip. Her friend said that they asked her, like, why are you going then if you are afraid? Like, don't go. But she went anyway. And the resort owners gave police even more circumstantial evidence. He said that when he told Mark they had found Florence's body, that Mark didn't ask where the body was. It was like he already knew. And he kind of just shot off running towards the lake where... Florence was. What was even more bizarre was like there was no way Mark could have seen where the body was from where he was standing. Now to test what the resort owners told them, police placed a mannequin in the water. One investigator with the camera stood exactly where the resort owner said that Mark Unger was standing when he told him that his wife was dead. 
When they looked at the footage, it was clear that there was no way Mark could have seen his wife's body in that water from where he was standing. Homeboy already knew because he did it or he was a psychic. Although the circumstantial evidence was starting to build, police had no direct evidence to link Mark to Florence's death. So they did what any good investigator would do and they went back to look at the evidence again and they took a look at Mark Unger's shoe and they found a white smear. You're probably thinking what I'm thinking. What does this white smear have to do with anything? But the railing on the deck was actually painted white. You thought you were slick, boo, but you're not. Investigators took that paint sample that they found on Mark's shoe, along with six other paint samples from the railing, and they sent that over to a, another forensic scientist who specialized in paint samples, and I don't know what he's called, y'all. So what they did was they took paint samples from various different locations on the resort and they compared them to that paint, that white chip or white speck that was on Mark Unger's shoe. They were trying to find out if the speck of paint that was on Mark Unger's shoes could have come from any other place on the resort. He used a technique that bombarded the sample with infrared light, which identifies the chemical makeup samples in ways that can be measured. According to this forensic scientist, paint compositions is composed of three different elements. Solvent, liquid, which is the color, and a binder, which is basically the glue that holds everything together. There you guys go. There's your little lesson on how paint is made, in case you ever need it one day. This forensic scientist found that the paint on Mark Unger's shoe was identical to the paint found on the railing and the railing rod, or post the thing holding the railing, guys. Paint on his shoe was consistent with the chemical makeup of the paint on the railing. Investigators started to speculate that the reason why the paint was on Mark Unger's shoe was because he kicked the railing out, not because Florence was sitting on it and it gave away. Investigators had just one question. Was this enough to get a conviction? Investigators had two important details about this case. The first test showed that a 200 pound woman sitting or leaning against the railing would not have made it break. The second forensic test showed repair proteins in Florence's brain, which meant that she was laying on that bolt launch on the cement for at least 90 minutes before her drowning. I don't know what happened if she was unconscious laying there on the deck. Did she just, how she got into the water? Did she just get up and walk in? I don't think so. This case made forensic history. It was the first time that immunohistochemistry was used in a criminal case. Finally, they got a break in the case and just seven months after Florence Unger's death, Mark was charged with first degree murder. Mark's defense attorney argued that there was no legitimate evidence that pointed to Mark being the killer, saying that there was no fingerprints or anything like that. Boo, there's paint on his shoes. Prosecutors believe that Mark wanted to salvage their marriage that night and that is the reason why he stepped out onto the deck to speak with Florence and that Florence told him that she was seeing someone that she was probably in love and that she didn't really want anything to do with that, that it was pretty much over. Um, and this is when they believed that they got into an altercation, probably an argument, and Mark got really upset. This is when they believe that he pushed her over the side of the deck. They're not sure whether it was accidental or if he was just angry. They believe he was just really angry and pushed her over. That is when she fell to the cement, which was 12 feet below on that uh, bolt launch. At this point, they believe that Mark had realized what he had done and he went back inside of the house to put the boys to bed. And Florence's body set out there, whoa, my gosh. That is some bright highlight. I do not expect that. <laughs> like blend that out okay anyway what, what was i saying back to the story this is when police believe that mark went back inside to put the boys to bed and to make sure that they were sleeping 
and Florence laid there on the cement bleeding for at least 90 minutes before Mark was able to come back out and he probably realized that Florence was still alive and that is when he rolled her into the lake and she drowned. I just have one question. How in the hell do you go to sleep after that? Like, how, sir? I'm just wondering, how? I don't think I could have slept, like, with my kids there and everything. Like, I keep saying I don't want too much, but then I keep putting more on and, like... Mark then kicked out the railing, trying to make it appear like an accident. But what he didn't take into account was the fact that Florence had already been laying there for 90 minutes bleeding out and there was a huge blood stain left behind that did not align with the railing of the deck, as well as the repair proteins in Florence's brain. They were still active. He also did not take into consideration the fact that there would be paint chips on the bottom of his shoes, which would be found later by forensic pathologist. Homeboy thought he was so smart. Also, where he kicked the railing was inconsistent with the location of the body. Busted! <laughs> I just love when they get busted. <laughs> Although it may have been an accident and out of rage he pushed Florence over the edge, he had every opportunity after that when he found that she was still alive to call 911 and he didn't. Instead, he rolled her body into the water where she drowned. And forensic evidence told investigators the story. Thanks to forensic scientists and some good police work, three years after the murder, Mark was convicted of first degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. What did you guys think about this case and my makeup look? Please let me know in the comments down below. If you like videos like these, check out my last episode. I'll leave it linked on the screen right here or right here. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, you know the drill. And I'll see you guys next Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. That's why you need to be subscribed. As you know, your girl is a serial procrastinator. You, you guys know, I don't have to explain to you. That's why I love you guys. I'll see you guys next time with another Forensic Friday episode. Bye.